I woke up today to the news of Chapter 11 reorganization for Celsius. While some had predicted this would happen, I did not believe that this would happen and I was proven wrong. I had always believed, as I mentioned in my previous video, that if Celsius management did not misappropriate your funds, they would not need to reorganize. Apparently, they did not concur. While I still continue to gather and compile thoughts and opinions of people that I respect and more information about the situation, and I will post a video about that when that is done, I just want to share some thoughts with you that I had while talking to some Celsians, some members of the Celsians community or the Celsius network community who were distraught by this move. Full disclaimer, I had personally withdrawn most of my funds during the, uh, during the end of the last bull market. Um, I have been in the crypto space for a long time and I understand how the markets work. So I, you know, I was able to avoid the situation uh, without a lot of harm to my own financial portfolio. Having said that, lots of sessions are hurting right now and for good reason. So I have some sh thoughts to share with you while I still work on compiling information and data as well as thoughts, intelligent thoughts and opinions on the chapter 11 reorganization of Celsius network. And I want to share those with you. One of the things that I learned, uh, one of the lessons that I learned was HALT, H-A-L-T, HALT stands for hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. A lot of the community is out of, as of right now, burned out, completely tired, and also very angry. If you are one of those people and you have every right to be, you should halt. You should not be making decisions right now. One of the reasons why you are in this position right now, potentially is because you made emotional decisions and you want to avoid that going forward. The less emotional you are about your investments, the better you will do. And that's also true in general in life. You make worse decisions when you are emotional, especially when you are hungry, angry, lonely or tired. And right now you're possibly both angry and tired and maybe even hungry for blood and your own coins. This is not a good time to be making decisions, especially rash ones. You should of course start making decisions at some point of time but that's when the emotional setback has subsided and you're ready to make decisions with a cool mind and can start thinking logically and rationally i would not make decisions until you have cooled down about this situation accepted this and have moved move forward <clears throat> knowing full well that something might have been lost forever while something might have been lost forever this is not the end of the world Certainly money is like water, it comes and goes. I'll talk about it in another video in the future, but right now you don't want to hear that. So I just want you to know that you shouldn't be making decisions right now when you are in a very highly emotional state, you should halt. And every time you're hungry, angry, lonely or tired, you should halt. The other thing I want to talk to you about is I could have done this, I should have done this, I would have done this, if I had done this, if I had done that, all those thoughts are probably storming your mind right now. I can tell you right now, regret is a form of self punishment. You are only punishing yourself. If you're thinking about what you could have done, what you should have done, what you would have done, if you had only done this, then that, or so on and so forth. There's no use to it because that's all something that you could have done in the past and you cannot change that now. Don't worry about what you could have done. Just take your lessons with a cool mind and move forward. I know it's easier said than done, but if you don't do that, nobody else can do that for you. So the other thing I want to talk to you about is what your mistake was. You probably had a dream just like the rest of us, just like the rest of the community, myself included, to have a passive income. That was a dream to be able to make money on your money. To be able to make money on money that cannot be inflated. To have yield in a hard asset such as Bitcoin. You believed in the idea. You know that there are millions of people in the world who get to live without having to struggle for their wealth. Who get wealthier and wealthier every passing month, every passing year, without having to do much for it. One of the keys to their success is risk management. 
Your mistake wasn't having that dream. Your mistake was not having risk management in place. And I will talk about it. Believe me, we will talk about it. We will talk about how to invest and how much to invest and why you shouldn't trust people more than necessary. But for now, all I want to tell you is that your dream is not dead. Your dream is not invalid. You just did not have the training or strategy for it if you have funds locked up in Celsius and are hurting right now. Everybody is hurting, so am I. But my portfolio was allocated to Celsius and to crypto in such a way that the entire crypto market could go down to zero and I would still come out largely unscathed. That is risk management. The lesson to learn is not that your dreams are invalid, but that you have to learn risk management. Many of my videos going forward will talk about risk management because this is not the end of the line for crypto, for you, for me, for anything really. This may be the end of the line for Celsius, but we are not even sure about that just now. Like I said, I'm still working on compiling information, opinions and intelligent thoughts about the chapter 11 reorganization and I will present to you in the next few days. Another thing that I saw that was toxic in the community was rallying behind people. Whether it's Alex Mashinsky or someone else, everybody in the community or at least most of the people in the community have this tendency to rally behind people. When I talked about sell token short squeeze, many of you said, in Alex I trust or in Mashinsky I trust. I don't support that idea. I support the idea that everybody has self-interests and all humans are fallible, including Alex Mashinsky and everybody else. You trusted Alex Mashinsky so much that you let him control the financial future of your children. That was a mistake. Don't make that same mistake again by trusting someone else who is promising that you're going to get your funds back. Hope is great. Hope springs eternal. But hope is not a strategy. You should not be trusting people just because they say something, whether it's Alex Mashinsky or someone else who gets to run Celsius going forward. I have never trusted people. I've never rallied behind people. I rally behind ideas. I rally behind sound math. We'll talk about sell token short squeeze in the, in the next video and the impact of this whole chapter 11 reorganization on the sell token short squeeze. But for now, I'll just say, I am not selling most of my tokens. I've kept most of my tokens because my position in the sell token short squeeze was small enough that I can afford for all of the sell tokens to go to zero without hurting me too much. And I've been telling you since day one, keep your positions small so that you don't get hurt. Don't get wrecked behind ideas. Don't get wrecked because someone said so. Don't get wrecked and don't buy Bitcoin at $60,000 because someone said it's going to $250,000. Look at the market cycles, but always consider the worst case scenario. Let me talk about that. Another thought you might have, and this is also, again, you getting emotional, is that I am 100% sure now that whatever we thought was FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, wasn't actually FUD. You might think that was actually the truth. This is, again, an emotional upswing. It's like a pendulum. You go from one end to the other end, and you stay in the extremes but it's still a violent swing. You don't want to have that violent swing. You want to have a stable mind. The truth is, we still don't know what the truth is. We still don't know whether or not Alex Mashinsky and his team played fast and loose with your funds, made decisions that were not in line with the Celsius business model. We still don't know that. In a video that I posted earlier this week, I talked about how they could have negative equity without having done anything wrong. I'm not saying that that is likely to be the case. I'm saying that is as likely to be the case as is the situation where they misappropriated your funds. Do you understand? We don't know yet, but it does not matter. What matters is that for now, they have filed for chapter 11. This is not great news for us. There is no other way to say it. It's not great news for us. That's all we know. So. You're not 100% sure of anything because there's no way to be 100% sure of anything. Don't put your faith in another person right now. Look at people's self-interests and look out for your own self-interest. That's the best thing you can do for yourself and your family. All right. Another thought you might have is I want to sell now. I have so many liabilities. My assets are 
really going down in value, dipping in value, and I should sell now, get out of this whole crypto space or whatever. Don't do that. How do you get wrecked? Well, you buy the top, you sell the bottom, you get wrecked. That's how you get wrecked. How do you get rich? You buy the bottom, you sell the top. That's how you get rich. Don't make an emotional decision right now. Just because things haven't worked out the way they should have, doesn't mean you cannot salvage this situation. So understand the market cycles. We are in a bear market right now. I think, uh, and this is just an opinion right now, I don't have any empirical data or even um, information that makes me say this. Uh, I just have a hunch that filing for chapter 11 was a big mistake by Alex Mishinsky and his team. I don't know what kind of political pressure they were under. I don't know what kind of internal turmoil they had going on. I don't even know if they misappropriated funds or not. But filing chapter 11 was one of the worst things they could have done and they have already done it. So there's nothing we can do about it. But understand the cycles. We have a bear market now. It cannot last forever. You will be able to buy Bitcoin under 15,000 maybe and then sell it close to well, well over 150,000 in the next bull run near the top. Again, when we're near the top, you're going to hear everyone saying, oh, don't sell Bitcoin now. You should be buying now. You'll have Bitcoin maxis like Michael Saylor saying, Bitcoin's going to a million dollars. Not going to happen, dude. Not in the next cycle. It won't. That's how market cycles work. You got to learn to take profits when the market's high. You got to look at your own portfolio and learn to rebalance it. Believe me, I'm going to make videos about that and you want to watch those. You want to learn how to rebalance your portfolio. You don't want to have one asset, even if it's Bitcoin, even if it's real estate, become the bulk of your portfolio or even one market. You cannot let that happen or else when that market crashes and it will, I don't care which market it is, it will crash sooner or later. You will be wrecked if all you have is that one market, one that, that one asset. You cannot hedge against market cycles, against crashes, by having everything in one asset or in one class of assets, period. And don't marry your bags. That's the next, next lesson. Never marry your positions, any positions whatsoever. I see a lot of people in the hex market who have gone down by 95% who are so confident that hex will bounce back to $1 or $2 that they are unwilling to take any other position. They may be right. Hex might even go on to go to $10, but right now the reality is Hex is below 4 cents. It was 50 cents, it's below 4 cents. Similarly, sell token was once well over $8 just a year ago, and now it trades at 60 cents most recently. That's the reality. So never marry your bags. Full disclosure, I have both Hex and sell and I have more than enough USDC to buy back the bottoms. I still have some Bitcoin. It's my private wallet. It's a small position, but I think the bulk of my position will be bought back under $14,000. You got to understand the cycles and you can never marry your bags. I'll give you a hint. I always plan for the situation when the entire crypto market, including Bitcoin goes down to zero for one reason or another. There's an alien attack or there's an EMP attack and the internet goes down and Bitcoin goes down to zero. Are you prepared for that? Because if you're not, you gotta be. You gotta prepare your bags in such a way that you're okay with every possible outcome, especially the ones that are imperceivable, inconceivable. If you're prepared for the inconceivable, the absolutely devastating, you're prepared for everything else. Never marry your bags. No one coin is so great, including Bitcoin, and I love Bitcoin. I like love to maximize my position in Bitcoin every cycle, right? But I am not married to Bitcoin. If Bitcoin dies, oh well, great idea, but I'll move on. You should have the ability to do that. Even if your portfolio is small, that's how your portfolio gets big. Next, another thing to talk about is paper gains. Oh, I had a million dollars in my portfolio last month or last year. Today, however, I got liquidated and I have nothing left. I was a millionaire and I have nothing today. Well, guess what? You were never a millionaire. Paper gains are not real. There's a reason why we call them paper gains. It's like being a paper tiger. It's not real. It's not based in reality. What you had on an app, what you had on paper, what your computer screen showed you is not real. 
It's only real if you sold those assets at a high price, paid the taxes and bought something else with those assets. That's it. That's the only way it's real. Oh, I had a stock portfolio worth X amount, but then the stock market crashed and I'm down 70%. No, you did not have that ever. It was just some numbers on the screen. Paper gains are not yours until you realize them. So next bull market, remember that and take some profits. If you don't, the bear market is not going to stop itself from coming back again. The bear market will return and the bull cycle will resume that. It's just a cycle. Bear, bull, bear, bull, bear, bull, bear, bull, you know, it's going to continue. If you don't take profits during the bull markets, you might be forced to sell during a bear market, which I'm warning you against right now. Now's not the time to sell. Now's the time to accumulate to dollar cost average on the way down and then maybe even on the way up. You're close enough to the bottom of the cycle that you can buy now or you can wait a few months and see if the market goes further down. It can. There's no reason why Bitcoin cannot plummet below $10,000. Anybody who tells you, oh, I drew some lines on a chart and no, it's not going to go below 18,000 or whatever is lying to you. He has no idea. He or she has no idea. That's not how it works. Lines on a chart do not dictate what happens to a market over the long term. Market cycles are governed by sentiment and debt. We have a debt fueled economy and Bitcoin is largely correlated to the rest of the asset classes in the world. It's not a risk off asset. It's a risk on asset. And finally, I have to tell you, if you take your lessons now, if you take the poison pill now, we will all be fine. This is not the end of the world. Losing all your money, even if you lose 100% of it, and believe me, I've lost 100%, more than 100% of what I have several times. I've had negative equity in six figures several times in my life. I'm fine. I'll always be fine because I always know that in the end, things will be okay. I learn my lessons, take the poison pills, and then apply those lessons next time around. You will have another cycle. You will have another chance. And you might think I'm never going to get the number of Bitcoin I had because I bought under a thousand dollars and it's never going to go below a thousand dollars. Maybe true, but your portfolio is not contingent upon the number of Bitcoin in your portfolio. Your portfolio is only contingent upon your risk management and responsibility upon you learning the lessons and then applying them. Who knows, you might get so good at this game that you end up succeeding beyond what is, you know, in your wildest dreams right now. It's a definite possibility. As long as you survive the bear market, you only have to survive the bad times. I keep telling everyone when the times are bad and remember times are bad every now and then for everybody. All you have to do is survive. Well then, you know, sooner or later markets rebound, your luck starts playing out again, and then you take risks again, but calculated once this time. So those are my thoughts right now. And these are thoughts that have very little to do with Celsius and everything to do with you. These are lessons I hope you can learn uh, in this bull market, in this bear market, so that the next bear market becomes the greatest buying opportunity of your life, even if this one doesn't. There will be a bull run. There will be a bear market. There will always be market cycles. You never missed out on anything. People thought, oh, and I myself was one of them. Oh, I missed out on the 2008 crash, recession crash. So I'm never going to get as wealthy as I could if I had only participated in the 2008 market crash. That's not true. There will always be another opportunity. And then another, and then another you will always have another chance to make it big. As long as you never marry your bags, as long as you never get emotional about your positions, as long as you never put yourself in a position where something going down to zero wrecks you completely, you're going to be fine. It's going to be okay. You need to plan right now. If you hold USDC, what happens if circle goes down to zero? If you are in true USD, you need to plan for trust token going down to zero. We've seen that with Tether. Everything is possible. A few months ago, 
If you told people that Luna could potentially go down to zero, they would have laughed in your face. A few months ago, if I told the Celsius community that Celsius might file chapter 11 this very year, well, you would get blocked by everyone in the community on Twitter. Believe me, I tried to warn people, but uh, people were not prepared to listen because they were very emotional. If you were emotional about any of this, you need to learn that nothing is infallible, everything that has a beginning and that has an end. If it has a beginning, it has an end. Sure, some things might outlast you, your children, your grandchildren, their grandchildren. But in the end, everything that you see around you that is man-made, that had a beginning, will have an end. And you need to prepare accordingly. My final thought is about some Japanese businesses that sell these mochi ice creams that have survived thousands of years. Thousands of years. Businesses that survived thousands of years. Apple has nothing on these businesses. You know why? These businesses have had the longevity of 50 apples. We don't know how long Apple or Tesla will last. These things haven't even survived for 50 years yet. These are not the only places you should learn from. You should learn from the businesses that have survived a thousand years. And we're talking about tiny little ice cream shops. And you know the key to their success, I've discovered? is that they treat growth as cancer. They're satisfied with what they have. They're very unemotional about money. And all they care about is not having any leverage, not having any obligations. Their obligations are minimal. Their costs are variable. So if they don't sell a lot of ice cream, well, guess what? They don't buy a lot of ingredients. That's it. Their labor costs are basically family-run businesses. These businesses are passed down through generations and families run them. I have so much respect for these businesses because they have survived the test of time. So remember, you can do that too if you learn the lessons. Time is on your side. We are all well. We are all healthy. Don't think about harming yourself if you are. Everything can work out if you remain unemotional and if you apply risk management. And I promise you, we'll talk about risk management. In the next few videos, I'll talk about cell short squeeze as well as Celsius network and what we can expect going forward. But in this video, I just want to say, it doesn't matter what happens to Cell Token or the Celsius Network. All that matters is what happens to your portfolio. And even if it goes down to zero, believe me, Mark Mayer had a negative six-figure portfolio a couple of decades ago, decades ago. I had a negative six-figure portfolio, and this wasn't even very long ago. Donald Trump had a negative $800 million portfolio in the 90s. It does not matter. It's just numbers. As long as you're fine, you're healthy, everything will be okay. The bear market will end. You can put $1,000. You can start with $1,000. And in the next 10 years, become a multi-millionaire. It's just definitely doable. It's not a pipe dream. You just have to apply the principles of personal finance and investment. That's all there is to it. So I hope that reassures you a little and uh, yeah, I'll absolutely see you in the next video. My name is Laksh Bell and don't take this too harshly. Don't take this news with a lot of emotion. And if you have a lot of emotion, just wait it out. Don't make any emotional decisions right now because that would be the worst thing you can do. Have a great day. I'll talk to you soon.